Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and what I want to do today is to kind of do a shortened version of the GPU diagnosis video specifically going into my usual troubleshooting algorithm so to say when I get a graphics card that I don't know the uh, condition of and that I want to diagnose what's wrong with it. So first part we don't actually need a multimeter the first part is just to make a visual inspection. Now this right here is a GTX 780 reference card um, the PCB that your card has will probably greatly differ um, and if you need help with identifying what components are what I have a video on that other people have videos on that but basically I am assuming going into this that you have a general understanding of how voltage regulators work and how they're usually organized on a graphics card PCB now if you want help for that uh, Boltzoid from actually hardcore overclocking has a video on explaining how VRMs work and other than that, just looking at graphics card PCBs and trying to figure out what is what, you will start to recognize patterns. That's at least how I learned it. So, the first part, visual inspection. We want to take a look at the card and see if we can already see some sort of danger, like missing, damaged components, maybe burn marks. Usual places that I concentrate on are these little capacitors, usually on the back, sometimes on the front, near the PCI Express slot. If you're missing any of those, that will potentially make the card just not get detected or miss PCI Express lines. Like if you're missing this first one, the card will not get detected. If you're missing one like here, the card might only miss uh, run at 8 lanes instead of 16. You're also gonna want to check things like around little voltage controllers, like this is the PEX rail. If there's a missing component there, if maybe around the VCO controller there's a missing component, if maybe any power inputs, sometimes the cards have fuses, this one does not have any. If it has fuses, check the fuses. Maybe sometimes there's like, yeah, power circuitry, just anything. It, just take a close look at the entire PCB. And if you see anything that looks out of the ordinary, that might actually already be your problem and can help you very, very well on finding what the actual problem with the card is. Now, step two. Now we need the multimeter. Step two is checking the voltage inputs. Now this card has four main voltage inputs and the number of inputs changes depending on how many PCI Express uh, power plugs you have because each of those is its own independent input even though they all input 12 volts. The power planes are not unified, they are separate. So you need to check all of them by themselves. So for the input measuring, we can set our multimeter into diode mode. So when the probes touch, you get a beep. And the first part is finding a good ground on the card. So things that are ground on the cards, the uh, casing of the IO parts, uh, the outputs, the IO shield, this little tab of the SLI finger, just the screw holes are ground. Each capacitor has a ground side. Like there's many, many grounds on a PCB. What I usually do for convenience is just stick the probe into this because then I don't have to touch it while measuring things. And if I now touch a ground, you get a beep. So, then we check our PCI Express slot first. So the first three pins on the left here are our first 12 volt input. Now we measure that, and we don't get a beep, so this one's good. Then we also have a 3.3 volt input on the PCI Express slot. That is, you go here, and then you go four pins left. So one, two, three, four. That one's also good. I have to say here that some graphics cards, like for example the GTX 480 or 580 reference PCB, have a very, very low natural resistance on the 3.3 volt pin, and some multimeters might actually beep and scream at you that there's a short circuit there, even though there isn't. So if you get a beep on the 3.3 volt pin, you could go into um, resistance measuring mode, and then just check the resistance. As you see here, it's more than 200 ohms. Yeah, it's like 800 ohms. If I remember correctly, those 400 and 500 series cards that tend to sometimes beep only have around 100 ohms, which is low enough for my multimeter to kick in. So now we have made sure that there's no short circuit on the inputs, uh, power input of the PCI Express slot, we can go to these power plugs. Now on NVIDIA cards, these are quite easy to measure because NVIDIA has these 5 milliohm shunt resistors. Each 12 volt input has one of these. So this is the one for the PCI Express slot that we just measured. This one's for the 6-pin, this one's for the 8-pin, but we can't do that on AMD cards. AMD cards do not have shunt resistors for their power monitoring. 
So I'm going to use something different. What you can also do is check the input inductors. Now here's an input inductor that's connected to the PCI Express slot. Here's the input inductor for the 6-pin. Oh, just touch it. And here's the input inductor for the 8-pin. Input inductors are present on pretty much every card. Some, especially like super low profile cards, like for ITX builds, sometimes do not have these. Some other cards also replace these with fuses. But on the vast majority of cards, you have input inductors and can measure these for 12 volt. The third option would be to just measure the inputs yourself. If you do that, you need to make sure you know where the tab is, because some cards have them flipped and the tab is actually on this side. But here you can see we have the standard orientation with the tab sticking out to the front. And then you will look at the pinout of an 8-pin and a 6-pin uh, PCIe power connector. Connect the probe here to ground again. And then we check all the pins. Now the pins on the side of the tab are ground, so you see this beeps, and that's perfectly normal. The 12 volt pins are down here. So we check that. No beep. No beep. Um, you have to keep in mind that there's sense pins in these. So the 6 pin has 1 sense pin, the 8 pin has 2 sense pins. Those can also beep. And I don't re entirely remember the uh, pinout. Actually, let's just check the pinout. Nope. The sense pin is. Yeah, this one in the middle is the sense pin because this actually doesn't beep. So this is the sense pin and the other sense pin is this. This is another ground, this is a ground, this is a ground, and then these three are 12 volts. None of them beep, that's fine. And you can of course also use these on the back. You have to keep in mind, usually there's a little bit of um, non-conductive, just insulating material on them. So if I touch this, which would be a ground. Okay, yeah, you see how this doesn't always beep, so you kind of have to stick your probe in there because uh, these are usually insulated from the factory with some non-conductive like material so that it doesn't short out if any metal touches them. But yeah, that's for checking the power inputs and we have found no shorts. If you would have found a short now, well, then you would have gone into advanced troubleshooting on finding out what actually causes that short. You would have gone down the power plane of the input that you found shorted and you would have checked what it's connected to and if maybe anything looks wrong there. Since we haven't found any shorts, we can now go on to step 3, which is optional. You don't always have to do step 3, but I still prefer to do step 3 because it can give you more clues. So step 3 is measuring resistances of the various outputs. Now NVIDIA cards have two main outputs, like two main VRMs. That's the vCore VRM, which is the sixth phase over here, that's sort of split. That provides power to the core, and this little two-phase VRM that provides power to the memory chips as well as the memory controller inside the GPU. Now AMD cards have a third main uh, VRM that's called the VDDCI VRM because on AMD cards your memory VRM only powers the memory chips and the memory controller is powered separately by the VDDCI VRM. Um, some newer AMD cards also have that a little bit switched up. They have an SOC rail and, and other minor changes. I've never worked with these more modern AMD cards. You can consult, um, for example, Bullseye's PCB breakdowns. If you have a card like that, that will give you a better idea of how the rails are distributed on the uh, RX 5000 and 6000 series cards. On, um, on RX 500 and older, it's gonna be this three main VRM uh, thing. Now then we also have minor rails. For example, I mentioned this already. This is the PAX rail. Then we have a little 3.3 volt regulator over here, which is a bit strange since we already have 3.3 volts here, but some cards chose to have a separate 3.3 volt regulator. Some cards even have multiple of these. And then we also have a 5 volt regulator, which provides power to the MOSFET gates of our VRMs. Yeah. And then also on newer cards, especially cards using GDDR5X, 6 or 6X, they also have a 1.8 volts rail which is um, an auxiliary power rail for the memory chips. And also some NVIDIA cards use BIOS chips that run on 1.8 volts. This one doesn't, so this one doesn't have a 1.8 volts rail. So, as it comes to resistance measurement, your core rail will always have a fairly low resistance. You can see we only have around 3-4 ohms 
and this ground prop isn't even that well connected. I think if we connect it better, it will go even lower. Yeah, now we only have 2.6 ohms. That's perfectly fine. Your GPU core chip has a very, very, very low resistance. And this is actually a pretty high resistance because this is a rather old core. This is a 780 Ti. It's made based on 28 nanometer technology. If you measure a 1080 Ti or 2080 Ti or like anything 60 nanometer or smaller, you will probably just see this because the core has such a low resistance that it just shows up as nothing. So measuring the core, not always that helpful, but on older cards, you can see these smaller resistances like this. Now the memory will usually be in the two digit range for ohms. So we can see we have 79 ohms. That's perfectly fine. Now VDD CI VRMs, if we had one, usually should at least be one digit ohms, usually probably two digit ohms. It always depends what kind of GPU chip you have and how big they are and what nanometer process they're based on. Then the PEX rail, usually three digit range. As you can see here, 126 ohms, perfectly fine. On other cards, this is a bit higher. Like I think 10 series cards have a bit higher resistance than this, but on older cards, this is fine. The five volt rail should be in the kilo ohms range. You see here, 3.6 kilo ohms, or more like 3.7 actually. And then the 1.8 volt rail, which doesn't exist on here, also should be at least 500 ohms. Usually, I think like around 800 ohms, if not over a kilo ohm, actually. So, why you want to measure these is because they can give you clues as to when you have a malfunctioning VRM, sometimes you'll see that the resistance is a bit low. For example, if you have a dead memory chip, they sometimes go internally short circuit and that will lower your memory resistance. That can also happen if the memory controller in the GPU has a problem on NVIDIA cards. On AMD cards, the VDDCI rate will show up low. Or maybe if something's wrong with the um, 5 volt rail. Sometimes you can tell that a MOSFET has gone short circuit, especially one of those driver MOSFETs like these that use 12 volts, uh, that use 5 volts for powering their gates. Because if these go short circuit, it will also short the 5 volt rail and then the resistance here will go down. Or um, what you can also tell if the PEX and 1.8 or if well, if both the PEX and 1.8 volt rail or just one of them go really, really low, like one ohm or just short circuit, you can sometimes tell that you have a dead core at your hands. I actually had one of those cards. I had a 1080 Ti where the PEX and 1.8 volts rail were basically shorted and that one um, yeah, had a dead core. That's how you can sometimes tell what kind of issue you already have without having to even turn the card on. Speaking of turning the card on, now we've done all these measurements and now we could put the card in and turn it on. We've made sure that there's no short circuits, all of our output resistances seem okay and we haven't seen any visual defects on the card so we can safely assume that the card will not catch fire if we try to turn it on. So we can now put it into our test bench and take voltage measurements. It will be at the same points that we just did our output resistance measurements but this time we will check what kind of voltage these VRMs put out and if they do what they're supposed to do. So that will be the next step and I'll see you soon. So I've now set the card up in our test bench and I've put the multimeter down into voltage mode so we can measure voltages. Now another useful thing that you can do is use an alligator clip like this and put it into the IO shield. That way we don't have to use our ground probe all the time and we just need one hand to measure our um, voltages. So before we turn the system on, you should keep in mind that the GPU chip here will get very hot very, very quickly. You should not run the card without a heatsink absolutely longer than, say, 30 seconds. You should probably keep it between 10 and 20 seconds because it will get very, very hot. Um, and you can kind of get an idea how hot it is if you periodically touch it with your finger, which I will be doing. And if it gets too hot, turn the PC off, let it cool down, and then try again if you don't have all your measurements yet. So. I'm going to turn it on, check our V-core voltage, okay, my power supply is power cycles once, check V-core voltage, we have V-core voltage, we have memory voltage, we have memory voltage, chip's getting warm, 
Do we have PEX voltage? We have PEX voltage. Do we have 5 volts voltage? That chip's getting pretty warm. We have 5 volts. And we have 3.3 volts. And as you can already see, we have an image in the corner. So let's turn the system off because the thing got too hot. So we can tell that all our rails work because if they didn't all work, then we wouldn't get an image. Um, but yeah, so this is how you do your voltage measurements, same places as you do your output resistance measurements. Now what you potentially could have found here is one of the rails that's not turning on or multiple rails that don't turn on because there's a power sequence on many cards where if one VRM has a problem, all the ones that are supposed to turn on after it just don't turn on. One thing that can also happen is, if, especially if you look into this area, you can see that there's a lot of small components. Uh, let's put the light back on so you can see better. You can see that there's a lot of small components to this side of the PEX inductor. If you try to measure voltage on this side, you could accidentally short out one of these components, which will make this power rail turn off and it will seem like it's defective, even though you just it's more lock your fault that it's off. That actually did happen to me earlier. So keep that in mind. And if you short that, you might not see a fire, a spark, or your PC might not turn off because low power rails like the PEX rail, they just, they don't draw enough current to make your power supply trip or to like really cause any sparks or fire. Um, usually the power circuitry has built-in security features and when it detects, oh, suddenly we're drawing too much current, it would just turn itself off. Sometimes that might turn off all the power rails on the card. Um, in this case, if you short this PEX rail, it just turns the PEX rail off and everything else keeps running. So keep that in mind. But yeah, basically, that is the end of the usual troubleshooting algorithm. Because now you would have either found something out of order, or like me, you would have had a card that actually like just puts out an image. That doesn't mean the card is working. You could still have a core problem. You could still have memory problems. Um, that is still a thing. Uh, there's advanced troubleshooting techniques with memory testing software. That's MATS for NVIDIA and T-Server for AMD cards. I have used MATS myself. If you want a tutorial for that, look up Tech Cemetery. He has a tutorial on his YouTube channel. For T-Server, I'm not aware of any video tutorials, but I think Google will still be your friend for that. With that, you can test the memory on NVIDIA cards and it will tell you if one of your memory chips might have a problem. Um, if you're seeing artifacts, for example, like if you install the driver and the car crashes or you just see confetti all over the screen, that's usually indicating a memory problem. It can also be a memory controller problem or just um, general damage to the GPU core. And those memory testing softwares will help you narrow down where the problem is. But as far as the basic troubleshooting techniques are concerned, we don't really go there. This is the end. So to reiterate, physical, physical visual inspection, power input measurement, power output measurement, voltage measurement. Those are the four steps that I think you should always do. And except for those cards that have memory issues and the such, you will find your problem doing those steps. So, and in the interest of keeping the video short, I think that's not going to be it. So thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something and until next time, goodbye.